The bids are in. The gavel has dropped. Ladies and gentlemen, here at Wine Bid, the auction is over and we are finally hammered. It has been a crazy last couple of weeks. I'm on getting over a, a little bit of a bug here, so sorry for my voice. We've gone the last two weeks because of the holidays without doing, um, or at least last week without doing an episode. So two auctions without doing an episode. We are ready to jump right into it because we have a ton to cover. This is Wine Bids podcast about all things wine value and interesting wine and wine auctions and finding great wine. Uh, with me as always is my amazing cohort, Paul Walker, our wine auction expert. I am Jeff McGurn. I uh, work here on our marketing team. And uh, let's dive right into it. But before we do, Paul, what are you drinking tonight? Uh, well, Happy New Year, Jeff. Happy New Year. Yeah, 2023. <laughs> It's a new vintage. Just discover there's like things attached to the bottle. Anyway, <laughs> check it out. I'm drinking a wine. Riesling. You'll have to pronounce Whoa. for me. You got to pronounce it for me since you're the German expert. So uh, I can't barely see it. Niersteiner, yep. uh, Potter, Peterberg, Riesling, Spätlese. There you go. 2001 from Straub, H.A. Straub. It's, it's delicious, actually. It's really, really good. I picked it up. I think maybe more than a year ago now and just cracked it. It's, it's I mean, just phenomenal. 22 years on a speed lace. That's still a little bit of a child. Yeah. Child, right. No, it's <laughs> just doing really, really well. It's, it's awesome. What, what about you? What are you drinking? I yesterday I opened this bottle of Basola, Valpocello Rapasso. Yeah. Um, yeah. Sweet I, stuff. To 2015. It actually is. I picked this up. A few years back from a local wine shop, which interestingly enough, this local wine shop I used to love to go to. They're not in business anymore. I think COVID, they went in business because of COVID. They basically uh, uh, specialized in importing and selling uh, German wine. And they had a phenomenal selection of Riesling and Gewürztraminer and oh, cool. uh, Pinot Minet and all this amazing German stuff. But I picked this up because they had some other stuff as well, but they always had really fun, cool stuff. But anyway, we've got two weeks of auctions to sort of recap. So I'm going to go yep. through and I'm going to mention some of the bottles where we saw the most action and a lot going on. The bot, you know, we had three bottles that had six bids on them over the last two auctions. So we had an auction on Christmas day and we had an auction on new year's day. Bottle number one was a 1983 Kistler Vieter Hills vineyard Cabernet Sauvignon. So this one, I think got a lot of action because we're talking about a birth year. So somebody who's turning 40 years old is right. I'm guessing is going to get this bottle as a gift this year. 14 trackers, six bids. We've seen a lot of action on Kistler uh, Chardonnay over the last month or so. Uh, haven't seen as much action. I feel like on the cabs, this one started at 75 bucks sold for 130. We had two of them. So two of them went way up, broke that hundred dollar mark and went to, to one thirty. I thought that was really interesting. But again, I think that was sort of catapulted by people feeling in the giving spirit and this being, you know, uh, uh, a marquee year, 40 year old for that bottle. So um, you're talking about the auction that closed on the 18th, right? Uh, no, this was the one that closed on the 25th. Oh, last week. Okay. Yeah. This was the 20th. Okay. So, Number two, that got six bids, 14 trackers, six bids. This one was interesting. 2019 Kobayashi Winery Weather yes. Eye, yeah. 55 starting price, sold at 82. Yeah. You know, it's so funny because I, I noticed this wine was in last week and I can't remember if it was had rolled over a couple of weeks. Cause I, I think I probably would have flagged it or it was probably added to auction late. I think that's what happened. Yeah, it definitely was. I just looked it up. So it was only added a few days before a close. Uh, so that was something that I didn't expect to see, you know, just because it's super, it's a super interesting winery. I don't know anything about it and the wines are rare and it's one of those things I'm going to look up. And obviously we haven't, I think we've only ever sold one bottle, I believe of the 19 and we've sold maybe one or two bottles of the 2020 and that's it. Uh, so that's something I, yeah, I'm very curious about because obviously it has, it has a serious following and I have no idea why. So I got to do some, do some research there. Well, we're going to find out at some point the night there was a, the other one that got six bids 
1999 Shea Wine Cellar Shea Vineyard Pinot yeah, Noir, which I which I mentioned actually on the podcast. Thirty five starting price uh, sold at seventy six bucks. I'm surprised actually. I did not think it would go for that much, but it's probably the rarity and the vintage. Rarity in the vintage. I thought that one was fascinating. Um, I'm curious to see, you know, whoever bought it, if you listen to the podcast, which is very unlikely because we don't have that many <laughs> listeners of the podcast. But if you are listening to the podcast, I'd love to hear how it is, you know, if, it, if it's still kicking after 24 years. 2007 AMP Divalane. Uh, Divilan. <laughs> Divilan. Yeah, I'll just do it for you. Please. For a couple of reasons. Divilan Mercury Monto. I assume that's the one you're talking about. Yeah. Start at 35, hammered at 46, I believe, or a couple of them. 46, or, 46 bucks. We had two of them. Two bottles. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I mean, that's, that's still fair. That's still fair. You know, that's not too surprising. I think they were underpriced to start. There were a couple of other Dovilen wines in the week prior, or maybe two weeks ago, we talked about and got bit up quite a bit. So now that was, that was not too surprising. 2010 Grad La Rose. Um, this one, five bids, started at 80, hammered at 97. That wine, I believe we also mentioned, if we didn't mention it, I mean, we talk about Grad La Rose every week, but I thought we did mention the 2010 in a prior week. And I think we did. I think yeah. we did. Um, I mean, you're right. We talk about Grad La Rose a lot. There are two that, that we didn't mention, but were on my radar and we talk about all the time because I love this wine and it rarely comes to auction. All right. So let's move on to two other wines that sold on Christmas Day. These are two of the same type. They rarely come up for auction. It's one that I love and always look out for. You and I had a conversation about these. I actually bid on both of them, but I was way up in a 1949 Chateau Saint-Michel River Salt. Um, OWC. <laughs> yes. uh, five bids. Uh, I started the bidding off at 135. It got up to 235 uh, where it hammered. Um, and then a 1927 Domaine Bore River Salt uh, OWC. That one, five bids. Started at 115, hammered at 185. I have had the 194. I've been so lucky to uh, have it twice. I actually have another bottle in my cellar right now. That mm -hmm. bottle is amazing. It is so good. It's still kicking. River Salt, I always find to be a tremendous value if you're yep. looking for that birth year wine. Yep. I actually feel like it pairs phenomenally well with so much stuff. It's not just a dessert wine from my perspective. I will... Mm -hmm. I will have it across the board. Um, I think it's an incredibly versatile wine as well. And it it punches way above its weight in terms of pricing. And, and oh, value. yeah. Kind of curious, actually, that the 1927 didn't sell for as much as the 49. I mean, 49, you know, it strikes me as being a stronger vintage in many respects because it's a standout Bordeaux vintage, but that's the only reason why. I have no idea what it was like in, you know, in Southern Rhone, Provence area. Um, and so you, know, for something from 1927, I think to hammer at 185, that's, that's not, that's not terrifically expensive for, for something with that, that much age on it. You know, and again, it's, it's, you know, it's, it's not, you know, a single vintage, just dry wine, but still that's, that's really, really cool and collectible. And, and that was a find for sure. I feel like a big driver of the price discrepancy between the two, because I, I thought that was interesting to see the 49 go for more than 27 would just be that there are probably more people that have birthdays in 49 than right. 27 that are right. still with us today. So you see potential, a lot more people going after that bottle. On uh, New Year's Day, we had a 2016 GD uh, Vara uh, Barolo Brico uh, Del Viole, uh, Del Viole, that one, 11 trackers, five bids, started at 90, sold at 121. Right. Um, Not surprising. Not surprising. Yeah, super, super hot producer. We've talked about some of the other wines. I think we've talked about like the, the Long and Nebbiolo uh, labels. They're obviously more affordable, but not nearly as complex as the Barolo. So that was, you know, that's a great wine. Then it'll last for many, many years. 
We've got a 1981 J. Moreau, uh, Javri Chambertin. That one, 17 trackers, five bids, started at 25, hammered at 34. It's um, still a great deal, right? <laughs> it's still a phenomenal deal. I was yeah. like, even with five bids, like 35 bucks for that, that's a great deal. Yeah, no, that's a fun bottle. And, you know, that, that proves you can find things with this much age on them, this much age, I should stress tons and tons of age on that 1981 bottle uh, that are, you know, very, very affordable. So that's, that's always a fun. I mean, it might not be the most complex bottle of Pinot Noir you're ever going to have, but it might be great. So, you know, it's a great, that's a great little find. For $34, I think it's worth rolling the dice. Um, yeah. Did you see this Greek wine that got bit up pretty significantly? So I was going to mention that because. Okay. Yeah. There's there's actually more in auction this week. Oh, really? From the same uh, same producer? Yeah, the Oi Kanamine. And I actually did some research on this. So what's interesting is, so I I always find Greek wines to be super interesting. And I, um, I'd i love to even try this one. So this one, thir- uh, 13 trackers, five bids, starting price 35, hammered at 53. We've got some at auction uh, in auction this week as well. So I couldn't find anything specifically on the 1999. From what I've read, this is a Greek producer who, um, whose family had a vineyard. He left okay. and w- uh, went to um, wine uh, school in Italy, got his degree, worked at Chateau Margaux, and then went and worked wow. at a bunch of different um, vineyards and chateaux throughout France, um, in Germany, um, in a lot of different places, then moved back to Greece uh, and to Crete took over okay. his family's vineyard and started producing wine. And the, the reviews are great. The price looks phenomenal. Yeah. Um, and it's getting, it's get it's got some great tasting notes. I almost didn't want to mention it because I didn't want to publicize it because I would like to get a bottle of this myself, but apparently it is a, uh, at least the newer ones are blends of 80% uh, Liatico and 20% uh, Mandarala. Okay. Mandalara, Mandalara, which, and I know you're saying like, I love Liatico and Mandalara. Those are some of my favorite grapes. <laughs> what I love about um, these types of Greek wines is that you have a, you have a lot of different native grapes right. <laughs> rather than the commercially viable grapes, which may not grow well in that region, right. but will sell well at sure. a supermarket. This one I think is fascinating. And we sold five of these, by the way. So all of that bidding went on and was for, was for all five of these bottles. I think, and I think it was also the first week in auction. So it wasn't something that, you know, was, was passed over or ignored because it was too expensive or something like that. It it went right away. It went right away. And uh, I'm interested to see if these ones get bid up um, like the last ones. I hope, I mean, I hope I'm able to get a bottle. Maybe I should put in a higher bid. I think these ones are super fascinating and I think they'll be really, really interesting to see how, how they come out. The only other one that I wanted to mention, we had two bottles of Jarvis. Um, We had a Jarvis, a 2004 Jarvis Cape fermented Cabernet Franc and Mm -hmm. 2008 Jarvis, Will Jarvis's science project red, both of those five bids. This was kind of a, you know, small production sought after, not well known, but had a following winery for a long, long time. And now you see them occasionally they pop up and I think they still, you know, they still have following interesting to see half bottles as well. Uh, probably, you know, extremely rare, <laughs> extremely hard to replace, but definitely cool. Yeah, definitely cool stuff. I, I have no experience with the wine and it's, Cabernet Franc 2012 is also, I, you know, I didn't even know they made Cabernet Franc. So yeah, that's a, uh, that's a, that's a rare one. Um, there was a bunch of Screaming Eagle Sauvignon Blanc in last week. And I think almost all of it sold. There was a 19 sold at 42.75. There was 2010 that sold at 31.80. And 2007, 31.75. So people are paying crazy amounts of, of money for the white wine from Screw and Eagle. It's, it, it goes along with our theme of Sauvignon Blanc that's more expensive than, than the Cabernet based reds from Bordeaux. Right. right. <laughs> somehow. Um, somehow you go. Seven year Actually, I, I misspoke. I said 07, but no, 07 was cab. Um, so the 2010 
Sauvignon Blanc sold for ten or no five dollars more than the 07 uh, Cabernet. Uh, 2010 Blanc sold, yeah, and then the, well, it's five dollars better. <laughs> but you know, to see the 19 the current vintage, uh, or I would imagine the current vintage. I don't know if they made 2020 Sauvignon Blanc. Maybe they did. I don't think they made a red wine from 2020. But the 19 at 42.75, and that's that's a lot of money for Napa Sauvignon Blanc. I gotta say. Uh, also, 07 Domaine Ramene Montrachet. Uh, though there were two bottles at twenty three ninety. There was a sixty seven uh, Romani Conti Romani Conti. It sold for five thousand. Bottle looked in pretty good shape. Actually, it wasn't wasn't. I think it had five centimeter eulage on it. But uh, that that was an interesting. I don't think we've seen too many of those in recent recent auctions. And then 02 Romani Saint Vivant three bottles at 29.55 so and then finally actually the the i think the biggest hammer of the week last week was the 19 streaming eagle cab three pack uh that sold for 10,500 so still okay. still some strong hammers there in, at the end of the year so at a per bottle basis it's still not that bad when you compare it to the sauvignon blanc right? i know right <laughs> i'm just saying i'm just saying Let's jump into uh, new stuff in auction this week. All but, kinds of cool stuff. All kinds of cool stuff. And what I really like about this week, it wasn't just your usual suspects, right? But to start off with the usual suspect, uh, 1989 La Maison Aubryon, um, that one epic vintage of La Maison Aubryon. Yep. It's an auction. We've got two of them for 1225. This one I thought was interesting because I feel like we seeing this soften in price, right? This reached $1,300 a bottle in November, 2021. And I, it seems to be just sort of ticking down. I'm really curious to see if this ends up selling at 1225 or if we're going to see this come down a little bit more. It is a highly desirable bottle, right? It is, you know, yeah. big vintage, a lot of great scores. It's storied. Right. Uh, I'm really curious to see what happens with this. Yeah. And it's funny because it hasn't been in your, like you said, for at least three months. So, you know, the markets, the markets arguably changed in three months. And so that'll, that'll be interesting to see if it does stay at 1225 or if it rolls over. I mean, bottle there's, it's in fantastic shape. So no, no issues there as far as condition. And it looks like it was purchased a retail removed from, from professional storage. So it's in, it's in great shape. I don't know if you noticed this, but the bottle that did sell in, in September actually had light signs of past seepage, which. Yes, which always, I did notice that. Always kind of a, a funny thing, you know, when it, when it reaches him now, previous to that in August, it hammered at 1290s. I don't know if the reason for that lower hammer in September was the condition, but I mean, that's not much of a difference in price, right? 1290 versus 1225 is not significant. So it'll be interesting to see what happens with this guy, but that's a, that's a fantastic bottle of wine. 2016 Chateau Pavi. Uh, This one. You love love bringing up Pavi. (laughs) I like bringing up Pavi. Well, this one, here's why I like bringing up. $310. $310. That's a great 2016 was a great year in Bordeaux. And True. I feel like 310 is on par with or even better than what you're going to get it on release. So I don't feel like it would be it's that much of a stretch. And I actually think there's some value in getting a bottle of Pavi from 2016 for 310. Yeah, I think so. I think if I had 310 to spend on Bordeaux, I would buy something else or I'd buy three bottles of something else. <laughs> well, I'm not look. Am I am I saying that if you want to compare it to everything else, I don't necessarily if you love Pavi, I think that's a great deal. I'm not sure why, but if you do, then that's okay. Yeah. Well, likewise, uh 89. Hey, we got we gotta inject our you know our opinions here. We gotta inject some opinions. This here. is not just about you know saying things are are worthwhile. Yeah. There there it also comes with a lot of color commentary. So I have to different inject strokes my for different folks. Uh 89 Angelus. Uh, this one, three. That's that's phenomenal, phenomenal wine. Uh, this I haven't one, had it in a while, but when I the last time I did have it, here's here's what I'm wondering. It, uh, you know, so this one we've got uh, we've got one of them. There's six trackers. There's already a bit on it, so it's gone from three forty to three sixty. Um, I I wonder if this one gets overshadowed by nineteen ninety. Um, yeah. You know, and and um, I feel like this is a great value. Uh, you know, you may disagree and you may think there are three other bottles you'd rather get hundred dollars a <laughs> bottle, but if you're going to go for Angelus, 340, even 360, I think is decent for an 89. 
No, it's true. I think Gonzalez is kind of, you know, we've, we've mentioned it again in the past as well. And it's, it's one of those wines that has risen to this star status, but it's also, you know, relatively not, you know, not nearly as expensive as say Cheval Blanc or something like that. I mean, arguably they're in different categories, but it's still a fantastic wine. It ages incredibly well. And that 89 should be, should be really delicious. So yeah, I'd say go for it. Um, You want to talk about, you know, on the lower price point end, there are two bottles I'll bring up. Uh, both we and, and we actually had a lot of Saturn come into auction this yeah, week. Yeah, there's quite a bit, You're right? Quite a, and quite a bit of really well priced Saturn coming to auction. We mm-hmm. had a 1990 uh, Sudero. Uh, I'm no, I'm butchering that name. No, that that wasn't so bad. You did pretty well with that. And then uh, uh, Chateau Girard. Giro. Giro. Uh, yeah, Giro. Uh, Americanize it. Sudero is sixty. The uh, Giro Giro is forty. Uh, what I think about it's cool about the Giro. I mean, that's a good anniversary wine. It is not a good birth year wine because that person will still be under 21, folks. <laughs> but uh, it will be a good birth year at some not point. Not for long. Just cut, what? Just one more Just year. One year. Both of those, $60 and $40. Uh, and actually, it looks like, wait, does, does the, the Giro may have a bid? Uh, yeah, it looks like it does. If it's if it's an odd, an odd number, it looks like <laughs> it does. Did you mention the 90 Sudero? Is that the one you mentioned? Or the yeah, t- the 90 okay. Sudero. Yeah, uh, I, I saw there's whole one half bottles too for 55, which you know, not a great deal, but it's such a phenomenal vintage. And in half bottles, they'll be drinkable. Some people are saying, oh, ones are tasting great now. I would probably hold on to it for a little while longer. Yeah, I, I saw those oh, one half bottles uh, from just an epic vintage. The other one that I thought was really interesting you know, again, talking birth year, anniversary year, uh, and speaking, uh, uh, it was the uh, Chateau Grand Prix du Casse. Mm-hmm. Uh, that one I thought was 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 really interesting. And Wait, can we go back to Sauterne really quick? Yeah. Before you move on, because you skipped over the Decam, which I thought was kind of funny, because there's half bottles of 97, 98, and 2000 in the current current auction. Maybe so. I'm bidding on them. <laughs> That's why I didn't want to mention. Actually, was there an, uh, I thought there was an 81 Decam that I was. Oh, was there an older vintage? Uh, oh, you're right. Yeah, from, from France Direct. You're right. 81. Yeah, That's, I mean, there you go, Jeff. That's your bottle, 300. That is, I, I was actually considering bidding on that bottle. And Three hundred dollars for a seven fifty of Decem is a phenomenal deal. Actually, yeah. Well, like, yeah, that's what I thought. Release. I know. I thought the ninety seven half bottles for one sixty. I think that's a great. That's a, that's a great price because it's not the world's greatest vintage, but Decem's awesome in every year. I mean, it's just arguably so so delicious. And so the ninety seven, you you can see in the photo, the color is pretty mature. You know, it looks ready to go, and scores are great if you care about that. And one sixty for half bottle is not not a terrible price. Look, anything- and two thousands at one fifty for half bottle. Two thousand wasn't a great great Bordeaux red Bordeaux vintage, but not great so turn vintage. But still, you know, it's it's drinking probably really really well right now. Anything created in 81 is amazing today. It's better today than ever, as far as I'm concerned. What else you got on the Bordeaux side that uh Yeah, no, I was I was kind of skipping through and and I I thought there were some other interesting wines from France Direct as well. And again, that's our our program that sources consignments from European sellers. They are stored in bone and then shipped uh, you know, I think most of the stuff that's in the current week or current auction is going to arrive in april this year anyway there are magnums i don't know if you saw these of 71 and 74 mouton and so that was kind of interesting because finding magnums of let's just say off your mouton is is always kind of cool and so i I flagged the two there's 71s at 770 and the 74s at 720 i've had 71 mouton but i honestly can't remember how long ago that was 74 i've never had i'd like to try it uh 2010 there's this chateau tessier les Astéries, which kind of stuck out because i don't know this wine at all i know tessier is the family that owns Oh boy, I'm probably going to screw it up. Either La Font Rocher or Ponte Canet. Um, they also own the 
property in uh, on Mount Feeder that Robin Williams used to own. But anyway, and it's called. Oh boy, I'm totally spacing. But anyway, uh, we've had it in 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 auction pri- in a couple, you know, in recent weeks. It's I think the Cabernet is around 300 bucks. It's very expensive. It's supposed to be very good. And I'll think of the name of it, of course, you know, after we're done. But in any event, the that stuck out the 2010 Les Asteroids at 95. There's also a couple bottles of Trotanois, which I always like to mention because I just think it's phenomenal and it's, you know, it's in it's in serious territory there. And it's still, I think, kind of, you know, I think it's still sort of reasonable for for how fantastic it can be. And the 75 is just an epic vintage. So 345 for the 75, I don't think that's too bad considering, you know, Petrus is three times as much probably. Uh, but this wine is very serious and should be phenomenal. The 14 is also available at 185. And deal. yeah, that's, that's great stuff. So those, those were a couple Bordeaux that, that stuck out to me this week. <laughs> There's a lot of other stuff from France that, you know, I'd love to mention, but not a whole much, whole bunch more Bordeaux. Let's uh let's jump into Burgundy. We've got limited time here. One that I was really interesting to see, mm-hmm. uh, interested to see, and I want to see what happens with. We have a 1990 Domaine Leroy uh, Romani Saint Vivant coming into auction. What? The Wah Domaine Le Wah. I, mean, I guess it's you know considered acceptable. Leroy, Leroy Domaine Leroy, uh, Leroy. And so this one, three trackers, starting price is five thousand dollars. The reason why I really want to watch this is this last sold in 2020 for $2,850. Yeah. It's going to almost double in price. Yeah. Yeah. Two years later. You know, this is in- incredible vintage. Obviously, Grand Cru's from the Loire are the, the wine, Domaine Loire wines are rare as it is, but Grand Cru's from, from the Loire are extremely rare. Mm-hmm. Romani Saint Vivant is, you know, tiny production. Um, I think next to Mousigny, there's, there's, you know, very, very little of it. So it's it's not surprising that that's where it is. I'm sure it's reflective of, of you know, worldwide external auctions as well. So it will be interesting to see, you know, how I, I took this. I actually took a look at this bottle in the, in the warehouse last week and uh, it looks looks great. So I hope yeah. you were careful. <laughs> yes. I, I didn't um, I didn't touch it myself. I, so I would, didn't want to, you know, be responsible for dropping it. So. Uh, we have a 1999 Henri Gauge uh, Nuit Saint. Oh yeah, I was wondering if you were going to mention the Gouge wines actually, because um, all of a sudden I, we've seen a few of these, and it's kind of funny because they they it's like they come in clusters or something. Yeah, and 120 seems like a solid price. It's getting good tasting notes right now, um, and I wanted to get your opinion on the Gouge. This you know 1999 Gouge. Yeah, and absolutely. I mean, 99 is just a killer red vintage it's just the the wines are just amazing you see fewer and fewer of them especially from sought after producers Henri Gouge as we we spoke about before these very serious very traditional New Saint George these are not showy flashy fleshy wines they're they're very very sort of correct and so I think the the Prouillère from uh from they're accurate (laughs) i like that term correct uh it's great i love pretense in wine as long as you can laugh about it right like if you take it seriously then it's problematic but no they're these i mean they can be hard as nails so i think in 99 which was a fantastic and beautiful red burgundy vintage that should be excellent excellent i i would actually rather spend the 120 on the 99 than the 165 on the 97. Uh, I think the 99 is probably stronger, but I, I saw that 97, 120 for a producer like that with that, uh, amount of age on it seemed like a solid price. Yeah, actually. And I, let me clarify too. I think the reason why the 97 is more is because Les Saint George, I believe from Gouge is probably considered to be a superior you know, vineyard source than the uh, Prudier, but that's that's speculation on my part. I'm not an expert here, so uh, but that that's my guess. But anyway, cool cool wines, rare and funny that we've seen <laughs> Gouge pop up just you know 
all of a sudden the last couple of weeks. So 2013 domain Francois Limarchi. Sorry, Francois oh, really Lemarche. Uh, <laughs> Francois Lemarche. Uh, Von La Marche. Francois La Marche. La Marche. There you go. Uh, Von Romani. We've got two of them. 165. Again, this seemed like a solid price. Well, me. wait. Are you talking about a specific? Make sure you mention Malcolm the vineyard. Sword. Malconsor. Yeah, yeah Malconsor. That's right. Because I, I flagged the same things. There's an O2 Malconsor in it. And, and forgive me for not filtering these as to what's new this week. But let's see. No, that O2 has been rolling. But let's see. 2010 and 12. I'd probably opt for the 10, actually. Over even the, though the 12 is slightly. Well, no, the 10 is just slightly higher. So and then 13 for 165. Okay, here's what I really like about the stuff coming in auction this week. There's a lot of burgundy coming in auction this week. There's a lot of very affordable burgundy, I feel like, coming in auction this week. An 08 uh, Simone Bizet, uh, Savigny Le Bon, uh, Le Forneau. Uh, again, yeah. I probably destroyed that. But that <laughs> one already, we have two of them, already has a bid on it. Uh, yeah, Simone B is it's sort of one of the champions of 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 you know of Bowen. The Bowen permit crews that they're that they produce are fantastic, and this 08 should be excellent, excellent. Uh, 04 Gerard Rafe Javri Chambartin uh, Lavo Saint Jacques. Uh, now, now 04 is a different animal. Uh, the Reds. In my experience, a lot of the reds were challenging. Uh, not not an easy vintage to get into, but I think you can find value there for. However, it's you know they're they're going to be fickle and they're going to be difficult. So it's interesting to see because I also noticed there's some there's some Chevion that we talked about I think wow. last time. So there's O four Chevions that are not. They're all sort of around the same price, 125, 155. The, yeah, but you're right. The Rafe for Laveau Saint Jacques is fifty-five dollars. Ver- veritably reasonable. I mean, that's a uh, you're looking at a Premier Cru from um, Cote de Nuit yep. for fifty-five bucks. Yeah, right. So it, you know, look, is it is it is it going to be as good as a marquee? Um, year like you're, you know, 90, not, not like you're 99. No, but, no. but it's priced accordingly. I think right. that's tremendous value. If you're interested in, in having some premier crew from the Cote de Nuit, this is a phenomenal way to do it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Likewise, 2013, Anne at Herve, uh, Sigo, uh, again, I'm butchering this, Sigo, <laughs> <laughs> La Charlotte. Uh, this one, six, one bid, sixty dollars. Yeah. Right? In uh, Premier Cru from Cote de Bone. Yeah, and these are great wines. Like I tasted uh, a few of these over the years. I think they were at La Poly a few years ago, three years ago, four years ago. I can't remember. Um, not that that means anything specifically, but it was fun to taste the lineup and and some older vintages. And yeah, they they I think they're very reasonable. Fifteen Chateau for sixty five. I think you just mentioned that uh, Le Fouet thirteen at, at sixty six. Obviously has a bid, so they're getting some action for sure. They're getting action. Away. The 2010 Fran- Francois Gano uh, Bon Claw de Mouche, uh, Moucher. That one two bids already, or we have two of them has one bid that one solid again, solid Christ 60 bucks for Pimia crew. Yeah. So- you know, it's funny. I, I, I flagged the other, uh, Claude Mouche in the auction this week, the, the Duran, because I love that wine, the red and the white, I think they're awesome, but they're considerably mm-hmm. more expensive. So that go new, that go new 10 at 60, which has bid, is definitely interesting for sure. There are, there are two of those. So I think one has a bid and I think the other does not yet. And then um, uh, 05 uh, Domaine uh, Dubelaire Coton Charlemagne, mm-hmm. um, $85 for a Grand Cru. Seems like a great deal to me as well. Yeah. And I think the 05 has a bid on it. So there's an 06 also for 80. And that's, that's, you're right. You're right. To find Grand Cru white bergs from, you know, top or let's say upper tier producers for under a hundred bucks is getting harder and harder. And so I think that 05 is, is phenomenal. I, I, you would always, 
Careful. Like, well, I, I'd always like to, you know, people like to talk about pre, pre, premature oxidation with, with white right. burgundies, especially from the 90s on until, well, some people are saying it's still happening today, uh, depending on the producer, but it's always an interesting thing to, to do, your, <laughs> do your research and do your reading and, you know, with whomever you trust as far as critics and or uh, amateurs on seller tracker, if that's where you get your, your information, but it, it is interesting to kind of look into that, you know, phenomenon and see how serious it might be for, for a wine like this, but that's still not a terrible price. And that's a good, that's a good choice for sure. Uh, what other burgundies are on your radar for this week? Yeah. So I, I definitely flagged those, uh, Sego wines you had mentioned. There's a 19 Antoine Jobard Merceau, uh, three of those at, six, well, they have, they're at 61. So they have bids. Solid price for Merceau. Yeah. No, and, good. and Jobard, Antoine Jobard, I should say is, is, is getting a lot more attention these days. There's a 1993, uh, Camille Giroud Corton Longuette. Um, I had a killer bottle of, of Giroud over the holidays. And so the 93 Corton Longuet, I don't even know Longuet, uh, is 105. That is just, you know, it's an amazing red Berg vintage and it's a great, great producer. There's a 95 uh, Comte Lafon, Volnay Santino Milieu. There's two of those at 160. Just, you know, great, great Volnay uh let's see not a whole yeah there's some more france direct wines which i thought were really cool there's some three liters or excuse me one three liter of 2020 fabian coche merceau mm-hmm. or 220 um there's also 2020 fabian coche merceau good door magnums at 230 and then merceau charms 2020 at 210 so not the same obviously as as the more famous coach we're all familiar with but still uh, some, some excellent wine there. And also 2020 Magnums of Fumard Le Platier at 120, which I thought was quite reasonable. Not terribly familiar with these wines, but they're, they're not expensive. Uh, the other wine I always kind of follow and, and, and love is the Fourier wines. They're no longer the values they once were, but they're still great. 05 uh, Clos Saint-Jacques is 760, which is kind of a crazy eye-opening price, but there are others as well. There's an 05 Combo Moine Chevy Chamartin at 245. There's the Appalachian uh, 15 Jevre Vieille Vigne at 165. And then the 2012 Moray Sandy Clos Salon at 145. And I think there's one more. But anyway, that those were cool. Uh, 2020 George Munieray von Romane popped in this week. I think that's maybe the first time we've ever seen a 2020 Munieray uh, von Romane 300. So priced where those wines are selling these days. Also, uh, the super rare bottle uh, of Jackie Trucho. Uh, Claude La Roche, 1996 um, at 1950. These are obviously very, very expensive and very rare. They're obviously, the label doesn't exist anymore as the winemaker no longer produces wine, but really, really cool wines. Very rare, very, very collectible. Uh, a couple of Chablis actually in this week that I thought were were reasonable. There's a Moreau No Day 2018. Uh, it's Parg, excuse my pronunciation, Parg Old Vines at 56. So it's got a bid. Um, and there's a Gilbert Peak also, which I thought was very reasonable. 05 Gilbert Peak Chablis Vogro for $20. And so that was a nice entry level price to get into Chablis. Uh, we talked about the 04 wines, the 04 Redbergs. There's also there's a Meunier Chamo Mousin Le Fouet at 405. And also the Clotel de Marshall and Louis Saint-Georges from Meunier 08 at 185. And I think that kind of rounds out. No, there's, uh, excuse me, in addition to the Clotel de Mouche Blanc from, from Joseph Drouin, there's also 15 Griot Chamartin at 400. Uh, and there's an 04 Mousigny, speaking once again of the 04 Red Vintage, uh, Drouin Mousigny at 600, which frankly is 
on the low end of pricing for steel. movies these days. <laughs> steel. One more standout. Sorry. No. Uh, famous last name here, Pascal Lachaud, Chambol Mousini Les Charmes, 2002, which I saw for 190. And that is interesting only in the sense that we've talked about our new show wines quite a few times. So I'm, I'm a little curious about this. It's getting... Looks like it's getting multiple bids. So anything with the show and the name is going to be popular these days. Let's travel uh, to some different areas of France. Um, up in uh, Alsace, we've got some in Umbrecht. Yes, I thought you were going to bring those up. Of course, I was going to bring up the Riesling. <laughs> uh, this one, $80 for a 2012 in Umbrecht, Riesling, Rangen, Ditton, uh, Klaus, and Urbain. Um, Rangen, I love yeah. It. I love this producer. Yeah. $80 is a fantastic price for this bottle, especially with 11 years of age on it. And then um, an 05 and an 07 Rene Rostange, uh, Cote Roti. Yeah, I, I, I tagged um, a couple of those. There's, there's, a, there's several bottles of Rostange in this week, yeah, actually. Several bottles. And the 07 is a mag for 300 yeah. I yeah, think that's a pretty decent value for that mag. For absolutely. Me. No, it's rare format for Cote Roti, right? You're not seeing too many large formats of those. So that that's a cool bottle. One that really interested me, this one, Champagne Pierre uh, Guimonet. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, this one, the Enophile Blanc de Blancs, non-dose. Mm-hmm. Uh, non-dosage. So, non-dosage, two-bottle lot. Uh, this one I was kind of curious about. So this one... As I understand, and you probably know a lot more about this than me, they do not use dosage on disgorgement on these. Right, right. Well, they don't have any sugar dosage. Well, there's no dosage, I should say. So I don't know that wine, but I'm sure it's darn tasty. Is this, are you looking at the two bottle lot for 110? Uh, the two bottle lot for 110. Yeah. I, I, thought that was a, I thought that was really interesting. And I think $55 a bottle is a great price um a great price for something like that the other one that was interesting non-vintage uh the ganava uh Vue, oh yeah uh Masvin, uh, right. uh this one uh already has two bids yeah yeah not um, surprised ganava we've mentioned numerous times so these i'm, I'm sure it'll be interesting to see where these go definitely uh, and this is this is now this is like a dj steve correct the uh Musvin. A uh, Masvin? Is it that how you say it, Masvin? I th- the the I think it's Makvin actually. Mach-Vin. Um, yeah, it's Makvin. Mach- uh, we've got uh, another interesting one. Twenty sixteen Paul Barra Brut Grand Cru. Uh, this one is a Magnum for ninety five. I think this is ninety five is a solid price for a mag of this. Yeah, that's 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 funny you bring that one up too. You're you're picking all the wines I'm I'm looking at also, but uh, that's yeah, that's that's phenomenal. That's super great stuff. I'm I'm learning from you, Paul. And then <laughs> the, the other one that I wanted to mention was a 1994 Domaine du Mas Blanc Bagnol uh, mm. uh, Remage uh, Le Cume. Uh, mm-hmm. This one already has a bid on it, forty dollars. Yeah. Yeah, you know, super reasonable. Old, uh, you know, next year it'll be 29 years old now, almost 30 year old uh, bottle of Bagnol. But this is a Bagnol Blanc, which I'm not as familiar with. So uh, I think this is super interesting. Yeah, yeah. No, it's that's that's cool stuff for sure. I think just to clarify, I believe uh, it's not Blanc. Yes, yeah, the domain name is Dumas Blanc. Blanc. Yeah, Dumas yeah, yeah. Blanc. I was yeah. I was like, I've never even heard. Of, I Well, so anyway, well, thank God we clarified that one. What other uh, French wines do you, because there's a lot of interesting stuff. Oh, yeah, all there. kinds of stuff, all right. kinds of stuff. There's some great champagne. There's, a, it's a, you know, we, we always seem to bring up perennial favorites, but there's some great Barèche in right now, the Campania Rem, Rem, Remensis, can't even pronounce it. Now Jeff's pronunciation is once again rubbing off on me. Uh-huh. Uh, it, it's Latin, I guess, so, you know, anybody's guess, but... The Campania Romensis Rosé, three of those at 90. There's the Reef Gauche Extra Brut, three of those. Well, looks like at 86, they've got bids. And then the 14 Premier Cru Le Cran, one at 125. I thought those those stuck out. They're just so, so darn good. And let's see. And there's a few bottles of Krug, which, which struck me. We don't 
often see the the clos laminate that's their super 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 top tier cuvee or super top tier glen i should say and that is currently up at what is it to 29.50 um, there's Magnum of the 20th edition Rosé for 800. There's a 96 Mag of the Brute for 1400. And then there's 88 Crude Collection at 1200, which is just unreal. Um, again, there's also the Grand Cuvée in case you don't want to spend that much for 195, which is not a terrible price. And it's the 168th edition. So... Uh, those stuck out. Now for other French wines, yeah, you mentioned the Paul Barra mag, great deal at 95. There's some Pierre Peters, uh, the, the Cuvée Chatillon in this week, 05 at 345, and then the 11 at 210. Um, oh, I skipped over, sorry, back to Burgundy for a second. There's couple pure Colamare wines that are in this week, the Chassagne Moyes Les Saint 150, which it kind of cracks me up because there's also 19 Santo Ban La Chatinier at 110. I think uh it's the, let's just say the better value I believe would be buying that Chassagne for for 150 from the 11 vintage, which I know is controversial for the Reds, but there's some really, really great whites. Um oh back to champagne. There's a bottle of Ulysse Collin, Les Maillons, actually four bottles at 275, which is not surprising because it has been just unbelievably sought after in these last year, couple of years. There's an interesting producer I'd never heard of, Waris Larmandier, and it just it stuck out because I've heard of uh, Larmandier Bernier, but not Waris Larmandier. Racine de Trois Brut, a uh, bottle at 30 bucks. He's, he's an old friend of mine. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there you go. Well, go way back college. He's making some affordable wine. Uh, there's quite a bit of interesting Beaujolais also, and and yeah, you, you uh, uh, quite a quite a bit of Cru Beaujolais at, at yeah. There's Fleury from Jan Bertrand, Old Vine, seventeen and eighteen, at thirty yeah. and forty five respectively. There's the Morgon, the Bio Dynamite, which is a obviously a word play, a French word play on you know. Dynamisme, obviously, obviously, Jeff. Uh, Nineteen at 2019 at 40 bucks. There's also the Saint Amour Le Bombin 19 at 35. Um, I wonder if that's Young Vine just based on the name, but maybe not. And then there's also there's the Cuvée. We've talked about uh, the Foyard wines, but there's the Cuvée 3.14, the Pie Cuvée. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, there's an 18 at 165, which I think the price is kind of coming down on auction for that because there's some other in the auction as well. I think it's been rolling. And then the 18 Cote de P is at 60. Yeah. For the Foyard. I, I, and, I, yeah. I think I, I was looking at those and I thought the, the Cote de P at, at, um, at 60 seemed like a very reasonable price for Cru. Sure. There's a lot. Cru Brugelet, I think, is, is typically a phenomenal buy. Let's uh, jump on a plane and head across the pond. I just want to start off with 2017 Chapelet Vineyards, Pritchard Hill Estate. For, <laughs> 140, for 145. Come on. Like <laughs> on release from the vineyard allocated, this stuff is 200 and above. I mean, it's like 260 now. You say 17? 17. I have a case of that. Two, 145 is a steal and a half for that bottle. Yeah, that's that's I mean, it's a fire vintage, right? So that's it's think it scares away some collectors, but no, that's uh, that's not a bad price at all. A couple of bottles, how come you're not bidding on it? How do you know I'm not gonna bid on it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great, that's great stuff. I'll start and and start running with the California wines here, real quick, or domestic new world, shall we say? There's a great little Vertical of Raffinelli Zinfandel. This is just one of my favorite producers in Sonoma. Uh, 05, 06, 07, 11, 13, and 15. They're all around 40 to $46, it looks like right now. And it uh, looks like cu- quite a few of them have bids. The 05 is at 41 and the 13 is at 46. So not surprising there, but they always seem to kind of hover around that price. So did you see all the Del Dotto, Del Dotto that came into I auction didn't. this week? There's like a ton of Del Dotto. Uh, I did. 08 Cabernet Franc for 55. Kind of an interesting bottle. Um, 
some Dariush came into auction this week. We actually have one bottle that's got an 18 Dariush signature Pinot Noir, two bids on it already. 45 is up to 52. It seems like a, actually a pretty good price for Dariush to me. There was a Woodward Canyon Cabernet Sauvignon Merlot Cabernet Franc special selection. That one's already got some action on it. Started at 85, 1993. This one's going to be a good birth year or anniversary, sure. year, right? Sure. Uh, for under $100. 09 Robert Keenan uh, Cabernet Sauvignon for 55. I saw those Keenan wines. They're they're like really them. really cool. And they they age a long long time. They last a long time. Well, and and the 50. I mean, the pricing is close to what you get on release, even if you're buying it at like Costco. Because I see these at Costco occasionally. Sure. Um, sure. And I think it's a great price. One that I thought was really interesting. We had a lot of um, uh, f- f- Faela. Faela. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's. Uh, I, I flagged a few of these specifically because they're from fantastic sources. Uh, like, Gruner Veltliner, uh, which I thought was really interesting. Yeah, I've never had the Gruner, but Chardonnays are really good. The, there's Hirsch Pinot, 12 at 55. There's 16. It's got a bit at 61. Hudson Chard, 18 at 35, which is a steal. Uh, Hudson Surratt, 2010 at 40. That's a great deal. Kiefer Ranch, twenty the sixteen Kiefer Ranch Chardonnay for twenty six dollars right now. I mean, that's just like that's incredibly cheap, and it's that's tasty stuff. Platt Pinot Noir, seventeen and eighteen, both for fifty, and seventeen Ruling Pinot at sixty five. Yeah, no, those are. A Those lot of a lot of really interesting stuff. We also a lot of Robert Bialy coming yeah. in this week. Yeah, I uh, love Bialy. It's great, great Pinot, and, or excuse me, Zin and Petit Syrah. Great stuff. Oh, well, I, I I actually marked down the 2010 Petit Syrah, $35. Uh, seems like a fantastic bottle. 35 yep. seems like a solid price. The other thing, which is a favorite producer of mine, you probably hate it because you're you're too cool for it. But <laughs> Ant Hill Farms, I really like Ant Hill Farms. Oh, there's a ton of it. A ton of it. And, yeah, and yeah. This is something you I like. I'm always looking for Ant Hill Farms, and I maybe see like a bottle or two come in here or there. But yeah, it's, it's just a ton of Ant Hill Farms coming into auction this week. Yeah, thirteen the Abbey Harris Vineyard for forty five bucks. Great bottle, great price, phenomenal oh. producer. That's that's one that I like. Again, Paul's right. probably too cool for it, but it's something that I really enjoy. And then one that I thought was really interesting that I'd be really curious to try some from. I may bid on some bottles. VJB Vineyards seems like. They do a lot of Italian varietals. Yeah, I noticed that. There's a bunch of it. No, I don't know anything about it. I know nothing about this, but I saw like Meridavola, it seemed like San Giovese, Barbaresco. Like yep. there just seemed to be a ton of Italian, like it seems like they yep. just do Italian varietals here in California. Uh, seem like really good prices and ones that I was super interested in. Sorry, I totally interrupted you. Keep going with uh, some of the other ones you're looking at. Oh, no, it's okay. Just some, yeah, some more interesting wines that don't often show up there's some um ancien pinot which we don't see very often i always look for it and it's really inexpensive 07 mink pinot for 20 07 red dog for 20 and eight red dog for 20 those will probably get bids and then the 07 russian river valley for 25 they're they're, they're long lasting delicious delicious wines not expensive they totally fly under the radar um there's yeah i I kind of i i picked out some things that i'd never heard of because i always like to you know to see oh something new or something you know i've never seen before aileron cabernet magnum 2016 at 225 that's one i want to look up you're gonna bring up miomi you never heard of that (laughs) alkina old quarter 2019 never heard of alkina before uh anarchist wine company ad infinitum 500 milliliter for 30 and crush pad piquette. I think it's a, it was like a custom crush brand and, you know, don't know it at all. So that I, I, I picked those out. There's um Buer or Bure family. I'm not sure how it's pronounced, but uh Cabernet 18 at 150. There's some Elizabeth game farm vineyard Cabernet at 2014 for 30. Well, it's actually got a bit at 36 and then the 15 at 40. I'd never, ever heard of that before. Never seen it before. Um, Covenant wines. We hardly ever see. And there's, there's the Blanc de Blanc, the sparkling wine, the 2018 at 20. And I'm, I'm willing to bet 
at least that, that it's quite a bit more at, at the winery because I know it's not cheap. Landsman Pinot Noir from Covenant 2019 at 50 and then 2021 Pinot Noir. It's first 2021 I think I've ever seen. And then the Red Sea 2020 at 40, which is interesting because it's a Napa winery and 2020 Napa Reds are uh, controversial to say the least. And then there's 2021 Covenant Red Sea Rosé for 20 bucks. And then 2022 Red Sea Viognier for 20. So I'll bet you, I want to make sure I'm, I'm correct in assuming that this wine was actually from Napa, but the 2020, no, excuse me, the 2020 red wine is from Sonoma County. However, still controversial, lots of, of uh, serious fires in that part of the world in 2020 uh covert estate another very expensive napa wine there's the 13 sage estate cabernet for 95 and that's year for napa yeah yeah smoke and vintage excuse me that's yeah hey hey, careful (laughs) careful i have a new year's resolution for the both of us we need to like maybe once a month or once a quarter whatever we need to each pick a bottle that's like obscure and off the beaten path yeah no i for each I would, other. So I would I'll, definitely I'll, do this. I'll, I'll definitely bid and on we'll something for you. On yeah. The show. What do you think? That's a great idea. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's um, do it. Cause I have some crazy, like, like you, I run across this crazy. I'm like, I've never heard of that. That seems so interesting. Like a Gruner Veltliner from California. You yeah. I didn't, I didn't know often. Bela made Gruner Veltliner at all. That's, that's, that's totally news to me. That's But cool. I, I'd love to try. And even the VJB ones where it's like all these obscure sort of interesting Italian varietals. Like I'd love to try those. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, before we run out of time, let's sure. really quickly run to Italy. There was a lot of Barolo. I feel like that came into auction this week. Um, in particular, yeah. we've got a uh, Giuseppe Ifilio, uh, Mascarella Barolo. Oh, yeah. Monk yeah, yeah. Uh, two, $220 is a great price when you compare it to retail. 22 years of age. And it's still got some time left to age with a Barolo of that caliber, right? Yep. We've got a uh, the 2013 uh, Alvio uh, Congeno, Congeno Barolo Rivera. <laughs> yeah, whatever. That, that one, $60, 10 years of age. Uh, I feel like that's a great price. Um, I mean, yeah. just a ton of, I could go out Barolo after Barolo after Barolo. There's a ton of Barolo. There's some good Brunello in auction this week. The uh, Elio uh, Altare uh, Barolo Brunare. That one's a mag for 290. Seems like a great price to me. And yeah. then Brunello wise, there's a uh, La Le Raj, uh, I, I'm not even going to, Raj, Raj Nea, Br- Brunello de Montalcino, uh, 2010, great year, $80. Now at 13 years of age on the 2010s, which is a marquee year for, for, for Brunello's, I think 80 bucks is a great price. And then there was an 06 uh, Zanato Amarone della uh, Valpocella Classico uh, for 70. Um, tasting notes say that it's in a great spot. I'm a big fan of Valpocella. Yeah. Uh, I thought all those looked really interesting. Were there any Italians that caught your eye? Yeah. Yeah. No, it's funny you mentioned that the Ranier Brunello because that 2010 is such a, okay. such a great vintage and that's, so good. That's, that's a favorite of mine. Anyway, I always track these wines. I don't often buy them because they're pretty expensive, but 80 bucks for a 2010, the Ranier, that's, that's really, really, that's really, really good. Yeah. There's, there's 09 Gorelli put Zine, which it's it that has a following it used to i want to say it was like a super big deal back in the i don't know late 90s anyway no nine's got a bit at 71 yeah moving up to piedmont there's an 85 clerico chai bot mentin ginastra 145 that's always really really good stuff a couple of new bartolo mascarella wines in. there's a 90 well not new but new this week 90 at 575 and a 16 at uh 390 and i think for in barola land that was oh yeah yeah i i, I flagged the mag of elio tari also brunate for yeah. 290. i didn't think that was too expensive no 296 carino I said 290 is a solid price. Yeah, no, for sure. That was a great year for Barolo as well. For sure. And 06 Carino uh, Vino Giacchini at 65, I thought was a, was a a decent value. Um, And yeah, that's, that's, that's what I had for for Italy. Let's head around the rest of the world. First of all, I'd be remiss. 
if I didn't mention 2015 Grange for 425, 420, mm-hmm. under 500 is a solid price for Grange. I don't care where you're getting it from. I mean, as long yeah. as you need some Providence. But the one that was really interesting for me from Australia was mm-hmm. a 2019 Alkina Old Quarter Grenache. Yes, that yes. Was- yeah, I mentioned that a second ago. <laughs> yeah, that but one. Yeah. I was like, that one is so. I thought for some reason, I thought I didn't even know it was from Australia. That's how ignorant I am. Yeah, it's. Uh... Now, that's a Grenache blend from Australia. And I don't know about you, but I haven't known Australia for Grenache blends. I'd be really curious to see how that is. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, you know, Clarendon made, I know they made some Grenache, like single variety Grenache wines that are, that are, you know, have had quite a storied past, but not, most everything you see is blended with, you know, Syrah and Mervedra. And so I, I'm curious about this Alkina. I think it's a it's a small production. It's kind of like some of those other wines we've been talking about, you know, that's small production of Aussie stuff that's getting a lot of attention at auction. And so that, yeah, that stuck out for sure. Heading over to Germany, we actually had a lot of good German wines. Yeah, the yeah there's some cool, cool reasoning in this week. Peter, those Peter Lauer wines we just talked about, I think a week ago, there's a there's a new batch of them in this week, which is exciting. So new batch of Lauer, but some also some other cool stuff. Uh, o four JJ Christoffel uh, Erben uh, Erdener Tepne, Tepchen, uh Riesling Auslese. Uh, mm-hmm. That one forty five dollars with mm-hmm. nineteen years of age for an Auslese is a phenomenal price. Oh yeah, and that one I'm sure could even go another 10, 20, 30, 40 years easily. Uh, easily. One that was interesting. This one's got three bids on already. Twenty twenty Whitman uh, Westhofen uh, uh, Ald Ald Erde. Uh, Riesling Trocken, uh, Kursus Gewachs. Uh, yep. This one, we've got three of them, three bids, started at 35, up to 39. Yep. Pretty well reviewed, seeing a lot of action, great price even for a newer, newer bottle of the Westhofen. Well, it's funny because right next to that, there's the there's also the Kirschspiel the, you know, grossest get box number 17, which is at 75. So I feel like the other one's going to, yeah. it's going to catch up in price. <laughs> yeah. That, that one's, that one's on the way up. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the other one I saw was this 2021 uh, Emmerich uh, Schoenleber uh, Fruthau Riesling Trocken number 32. Uh, this one's got two bids on it already started at 20. It's at 22. Already a lot of auction on this one. Yeah. Yeah. That's that. That is a sought after producer and also, you know, brand new release. It looks like there were two, though, that I mean, look, if it were my money, I thought these ones were really interesting. A 1998 uh, Mitz Lauritz Hoff. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm even I and I know German and I'm butchering that. Uh, Chittenheimer Apotheke uh, Riesling Ice Fine Gold Capsule. So this is an ice fine, right? Yeah. Um, and you're looking at $40 which is a phenomenal price with 25 years on it. Yeah. Uh, just an um, amazing amount of age for an ice wine. Again, probably will go many more decades if you really want it to, but I'm sure it's drinking fine now. Yeah. Uh, phenomenal price yeah. for, that re- for that ice wine. And then a 76 uh, Reinhold Senfter Niersteiner uh, Olberg uh, Uberg uh, Riesling Baron Ausley, say from 76. So that one's for $65. Again, you know, lots of age on it. Great. Yeah, amazing vintage too. Amazing vintage. And a Baron Auslese especially is, is going to stand the test of time. Yeah, you know, they, absolutely. I mean, those are, they handpicked all of those grapes to be perfect, right? Yeah. Um, and for 65 bucks with, right. with that much age on it, right? Right. 47 years of age on, on that bottle. So that one, those ones I thought were fantastic. I don't know if there's any other reason. Yeah, no, nothing else from, from Germany. I kind of skipped over some other stuff I wanted to mention because we have to drop here. Yeah. We've got like a couple minutes left. Yeah. There's some, some, some cool Sonoma wines that I, that I skipped over some uh, 14 and 15 wooden head, Richie Vineyard, Cinnarcone Pinot Noir for 30 each. Wooden has got kind of a, a funny following, but obviously it's not, you know, people aren't going after it at auction, but they're, they're good wines, traditional and tasty and inexpensive. Uh, I noticed 07 and 12 William Selium Hirsch Pinot. Yeah, I saw, I saw a lot out. of William Selium coming yeah. out this week. 
up in Oregon, we were talking about this before the, before the, we started the podcast, there's uh, 14 and 18 Walter Scott, the ex Novo vineyard Chardonnay, which is the one everybody goes after still though, you know, six, it, the 14s at 66, it's got a bit on it, obviously and the 18s at 70. They're not, that's essentially what they cost at the winery. And they're also pretty hard to get. Um, and Oh, keeping, keeping along the lines of, of, big followings in Burgundy. I did want to mention there's a couple bottles of the, the Vincent Duroy Gentil Bourgogne Blanc in right now at reasonable prices. And I, at 35, actually there's five bottles that have bids at 42 and there's a single bottle with no bids at 35. So those are there. A couple cool wines from Anderson Valley. They're Toulouse Estate Pinot Noir at 25 bucks. It's, that's super cheap. And then Hungarian Oak Estate Pinot Noir at 17 for 30. So I thought those stood out. And then there's a uh, funny label that somehow passed the uh, ABC and or the wine authorities tank garage middle did you see this the middle finger barbera <laughs> speaking of no i didn't see this oh yeah it's hilarious so you got to look at it anyway you'll see it that that stuck out at me too for 35 um, bucks that'd be funny, a funny gift to give someone you're not not happy with i'll add two things before we wrap up there was a, a good amount of tokai that came into auction this week which oh. i think is really cool and then a good amount of older port that came into auction this week um, yes yeah, a no. bunch of 83 so if you know anyone who was born in 83 and is turning 40 this year there's like a bunch of bottles of the awfully boa vista 1983 port right. in auction so anyway with that folks let's we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up here uh my name is jeff mcgurn here with wine bid this is my cohort paul happy bidding have a great rest of your week and happy new year from us thank you happy new year